Greetings. What I've got on the desk today is a High Life 9 watt LED lamp. What's so special about it? It's got a battery in it, that's what. In fact, it's two LED lamp circuits in one housing. Let's pop the lid off and take a closer look. Now this metal backed circuit board is snap fitted into place and into contact with a metal shell inside the, uh, the plastic outer. And what you can see on the board are three separate LED circuits. The outer ring of 12 LEDs only runs when the lamp is connected to the mains. These are all triple chip LEDs with a forward voltage of 8.8 .8 volts, uh, connected in pairs in a series string of six. The inner ring of 13 LEDs only runs when the, uh, the, the unit is on battery or once it's fully charged. These are all dual chip LEDs with a forward voltage of 2.75 volts and they're all connected in parallel. That leaves two more LEDs, uh, again dual chip, which actually sit in both circuits but will only illuminate if the battery is fully charged or has been disconnected. More on that later. Now what's really clever about this lamp is it doesn't just come on as soon as the mains goes off. If it did, you'd have a lamp you can't turn off. In fact, if it's the only lamp connected to a particular switch, or one of up to five of the same type of lamp, it behaves exactly like an ordinary lamp. Switch it on, it switches on. Switch it off, it switches off. However, if there's a power cut, switch it on, it detects the change in line impedance and starts running on battery. That detection feature is sensitive enough that even a wet finger across the terminals is enough to run it. Or you can do an Uncle Festo with it and light it with your tongue. Uh, that's not the only way to run it out of a socket though. It does come with this little plastic bayonet adapter with a push button on the back. So you can hang it up or use it as a flashlight. It does mean you can't have any other type of bulb on the same light switch. If you do, it detects that light as though it's the rest of the house wiring in a power cut scenario and lights up. It's also got three brightness settings when running on, on battery, which are toggled by turning it off and on again. So if you want three hours runtime, run it at full brightness. If you want nine hours, turn it down. So it's a very clever lamp design. And as you can see, I've already popped the lid off one. So let's, um, let's see what the schematic reveals. Some weird interconnections, that's what. There are two ICs. Over on the left is a conventional LED driver, a Maxic MT7772A and that drives the mains only LEDs. Over on the right, a sincere sec QW2889F handle the fancy battery backup LEDs. However, normally for the MT7772A, that connection from the LED cathodes will go round to the connection between C1 and T1. In this case though, it's going via the third pair of LEDs and all of the battery supply LEDs. What those LEDs will of course do is clamp the anode of D1 to a maximum of 5.5 volts above ground. This then feeds the VDD pin of the QW2889F and that provides the power for charging the battery. Based on the lamp's overall power consumption measured at 8.6 watts, the 53 volt forward voltage of the LED array and the drop across the battery itself, I'd say that's about 150 milliamps available for battery charging. The VL and VN pins of that chip are just used for the power line impedance detection circuit. When the battery is charging, it pulls the voltage down too low to illuminate those extra LEDs. The third pair illuminates very dimly, but the ring of 13 stays off. Once the battery is charged though, or if the battery is disconnected, the charging circuit stops drawing power. It's still got to go somewhere though, otherwise the main LEDs won't light. And it's at this point it flows around through the third pair and the ring of 13, so the whole lot is lit. So there you have it, a mains LED lamp with built-in battery backup, which you can also use as a torch, or for a bit of Adam's family cosplay. Thanks for watching.